So why'd you start playing the cello? Okay, well, I, yeah. I was wondering if you would ask me that. Um, okay, so I started playing the cello when I was 10. They came around and they were asking us, I went to a public school and they, they came around and were trying to recruit for their various either band or orchestra or whatever. And I really wanted to be in band. I wanted to play the saxophone. So, um, I mean, because obviously that's a really cool instrument I wanted to be cool. And my mom made the mistake of taking me to a James Bond movie, The Living Daylights with Timothy Dalton. And there's a cellist in that movie if you haven't seen it. And um, the cellist, it's a woman and she actually turns out to be a sniper slash cellist. And in one particular scene of the movie, uh, they are sliding down a snowy slope in the cello case using the end pin of the cello as a way to steer it and in the course of action they get a bullet hole in the cello and then later on you see a scene where she's playing a concert with a bullet hole in her cello and she was just like the coolest person I had ever seen and I definitely was I had just been converted into wanting to play the cello. So um, I feel like my life is almost that exciting as being um, that sniper cellist lady. Just a little, little more safe, but exciting. Cool. All right, so going into, uh, going into the Disney movies. Oh, uh, so who's your favorite Disney princess? Okay, I had to think about this one a lot, but I think it would be probably I'm gonna go off script here. I think it's gonna be Ariel because I identify a lot with her. She had to sort of go against the grain a little bit and, and defy everybody's expectations of her and um, you know just do what she felt like she wanted to do. Uh, just for me, it's kind of my, my family, well my dad really wanted me to be an engineer and I sort of just had to say, sorry, Dad, um, I'm going to be a cellist. Uh, so I don't know. I just felt like a kinship with Ariel having to sort of just do what she felt called to do and not be an engineer. I don't think mermaids make very good engineers anyway. No, probably not. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so going on to the dark side of things, Ooh. who's your favorite villain? Well, I have to say, it is from the same movie, the same movie, Ursula. Um, I actually, there's a problem that I have. Whenever someone says, it's what I do, I launch into Ursula's uh, big song from the Little Mermaid where she's like, it's what I do, it's what I live for, to help unfortunate merfolk like yourself. Poor souls with no one else to turn to. So you really have to watch out when you're in my house. If you say that, I will just like launch into this 10 minute tirade where I'm Ursula and doing all the dancing and everything. It's, it's pretty bad. You can understand. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so why do you like playing in the Columbus Symphony? Okay, I love coming down to play the Columbus Symphony. Um, even though I don't really consider myself an orchestral player, I'm kind of a little bit too, um, what's, what's the nice word, exuberant. Um, so a lot of times I get in trouble for, for being too emotive on stage, I think. So I tend to play a lot more with pops orchestras, like the Atlanta pops and everything. Um, and I've played with, um, like I've played on Oprah with uh, Josh Groban and played with Barry Manilow and Donna Summer and all these people who um, need orchestra to back them up sometimes. So that's mostly what I do and plus some chamber music. But I love coming down here. Number one, because George is funny and he makes rehearsals fun. Like he's just, that guy should be a stand-up comedian, I think. Um, and also, like this is the pretty critical part for me. 
when I come down here, I feel like I'm learning, which is kind of, it seems like, okay, yeah, you do, you learn all the time, but really as a professional musician, you kind of feel like you've got everything figured out and, you know, but when I come here, George is such a stickler about how you're playing. Like sometimes as string players, we, we like using the bow is like breathing for us and sometimes we do it improperly. And when I come down here, he's always talking to us about how we're using the bow and making sure that we're listening for any swells in our sound. And I actually take what he tells me down here and I transfer it to everything else that I do with cello. So in my chamber music stuff, I'm watching out for improper usage of the bow. Um, with all my students, I get really nasty about it um, and have them be, be watching out for that too. So it's really beneficial and that is why I love coming down here.